Hey, this is Jamie from Stonemeyer Games, and I'm back again for another round of Rolling Realms played against myself, essentially. But you can join in the comments and let me know what your score is as you play along. Uh, I'm going to explain three different realms. We're going to play through them, and that's it. About 15 minutes here we're looking at. All right, uh, so I'm going to switch. Actually, no, I'll keep the camera up looking at me while I explain how these different realms work, and then I'll jump right in. And if you just want to play uh jump in and start playing the first roll will be a five and a six i'll show you that on camera in a second so we'll be using the tapestry realm in tapestry you use different numbers to fill in these polyomino shapes on this grid some of the little cells here are already filled in and when you complete a bigger square like if i was able to fill in all three spaces here i would gain a coin the goal of tapestry overall is to fill in the big rows and the big columns and you'll get stars if you do that the other realm that we're playing with is Charter Stone. So in Charter Stone, early on in the game, you'll be using a, a die to cross off one of these little houses and uh, based on the number here. So if I have a five, I could cross off that five. I would gain a coin right away. And then right below it in the crate associated with that little house, um, I would write down the number of the other die. Or if I'm just creating a die using some of the, the uh, resources that I have, I'm writing either ro number either rolled number here um, that number that die is still available to use in another realm but you know, I'm just noting the number here and then later in the game typically in charter stone I can use a die so say I have a few fives written in down here I could use a five to cross off all of the numbers that match that that die down here in the crates to gain stars for each of them so I'm trying to basically get the same number in all of these crates if I can so later on I can use a single die to cross all of them off all at once we'll see if I can do that last we have scythe this uses the top and bottom action system in scythe a little bit I can either use a number so say we have a five again I can use a five to cross off uh, this top row box and gain a heart or I can use a five to cross off this bottom row box which also uh, has a heart in it, but that's a heart cost because the bottom row is how you get stars. So I could cross off that five, I have to spend a heart and I would gain a star. Or like inside where you can combine, like the real game side where you can combine top and bottom row actions, I could spend a five here, gain a heart, and then if I have the resource right below it, uh, right away, I can spend that resource to immediately cross off that cell and gain a star. I'll show you how that works as I actually play along. Let me change the camera orientation here so you can see what I'm working with down here a little bit. Um, and uh, yeah, here we go. So the first roll I mentioned is five and a six. Um, actually, I'm getting a little notification here that the frame rate, rate is too low. Uh, so we can post in the comments. Let me know in the comments if you're actually here it's not showing any comments right now. It's just telling me that I have a low frame rate. So hopefully it's working okay. I can't really tell. Hopefully it is. If not, I'll film this again and post it on YouTube separately. But yeah, let me know in the comments below if you can, if you can actually uh, hear and see me right now. So I will use the five. Let's see. A six is good in tapestry early on. Here we go. Garrett is here to let me know. Um, okay. People are here. Good. Okay. Thank you for the comments. That's helpful. Um, Awesome, thank you. So I'll use, six is really good in tapestry early in the game because you get a giant shape out of the six and that becomes harder to fill in later in the game. Um, so I will go with this big shape here. So I'll fill in that space in tapestry and I gain a coin for that. Over in charter stone, let's see. I already have a coin, can I use that anyway over here? I could use the I could do that right away actually and scythe, but no, I'm gonna use the um, let's see, no. I will use so I use the six there. I'll use the I'll use my one that I just gained. No, no, I'm not gonna do that. I'll use the five I'm sorry, I'm 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 uh, changing my mind. I'll use the five over here to gain another coin. I'm trying to decide if I actually want to do anything over here yet, but I don't want to do anything in scythe. So that is a five and a six. I know you can't see what I'm doing here, but hopefully you can hear me talk through it. Okay, next roll, we have a six and a one. Six and a one. So again, six could be good to use in tapestry early in the game, but I like that one. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna use the six. Oh, I forgot to note the number here. I, I should have noted a six here in Charterstone, which I've done now. 
um, which gives me an incentive to put more sixes down there. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll put the one over here. I'll use the one in Charter Stone. I gain a pumpkin, and I have to note another six down there in Charter Stone. Thank you, Garrett. Caught my mistake in Charter Stone there. So I've used my one. I still have the six available. Um, I don't have a heart yet, so I don't want to use it in scythe. Let me try to fit this six in over here into tapestry. Where can I still fit that in? Because you have to fit the whole shape. You can't fit just part of the shape. Uh, for some reason, I've always had a hard time filling in this six shape. No, that won't work. Okay, I'll go there, 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 and here. That doesn't actually complete anything. That's going to make it a little hard, but I'll figure that out. Okay, so that's one and a six. Jody says, nice dice tray. Yeah, thank you. Uh, someone made this. Andy Ungland made this for me years ago. It's very nice of him to do that. I have a two and a four. Two and a four in the third turn of the game. Two I could use over here in a tapestry. I think I want to do that. Yeah, I'll use a two. That actually completes two cells. That completes a heart cell and a coin. And I can use the four somewhere else. You have to use it in a different realm. I don't want to use it in Charter Stone right now. In Scythe, if I use that four, I do have a pumpkin. Yeah, I'll use it in Scythe. So I'll cross off this to gain a coin. And I will use, I have to spend a pumpkin. I don't need a number, a number down there. I just need to be able to right away spend that resource. I have that resource, so I'll cross that off too and gain a star. And the question is, should I start to create dice and use them in Charter Stone? I think it's a little bit too early because I'd love to get some more sixes down there. Hopefully, I'll roll a six here with third turn. Oh, Tim says, slow down a little bit. Uh, feel free to pause me. You're welcome to pause. Uh, I'll try to not go too fast. Turn four. Can you see that? Five and a three. Three and a five. In turn four here. Three and a five, what can I do with that? I could complete, I could actually complete a row up here. That might be nice. Yeah, I'll use the three. I don't know if I use a five over there. Yeah, I'll use the three over here to complete this big square. I get a pumpkin from doing that. And at the end of the game, I'll mark, actually I have a row. Oh no, I don't have a, I don't have a full row there. I need to fill in that last little dot. You can't see it, but I need to fill that in a little bit. That was a three. I have a five that I could spend probably over on side. Yeah, yeah, I'll use the five over on side. It gives me a heart. And I do indeed have a coin. And so I'll cross that off and gain a star. All right, so that's a three and a five on turn four. Doing pretty good. I'd love to get some more sixes for Charter Stone though. And really, putting sixes in, in my crates on Charter Stone is not a great strategy. I'd rather have that be a low number because later in the game I could create a, a number using the coins and mark all them off. But uh, making a six from, from coins is tough to do. Coin, I'm going to start rolled up my desk here. I'm sure that was very loud for you. Two and a four. Another two and a four. No sixes there. All right, what can I do with that four? I love filling in tapestries. It's, it's just satisfying to do. So I might keep doing that. Yeah, I'll, I'll fill in there, 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 and there. That'll be my four. So I'll get a heart. And then I'll probably use the two over here inside. I'm running out of turns for Charter Stone, but maybe I can pull it off. So here's the two. I'll get another heart. And I have to spend another pumpkin. So I'm down to zero pumpkins to get another star. But I'm doing okay there. How are you all doing so far if you're playing along live? Have you uh, you filled in Charter Stone yet or filled in Tapestry? All right, turn six. Another two and a four. Maybe this is good for somebody out there. Is that, are any of you actually rooting for two and a four right now? Barry just got his pre-order in the mail. Might be too late for you to play along live, Barry, but uh, you, can, you can pause this and compete against me uh, not live. Or I'll, put, I'll throw this up on YouTube when I'm done so anyone can play along. So another two and a four. So I might, and I don't have the pumpkins to manipulate the dice. Pumpkins you can use to manipulate the dice a little bit, but I don't have any pumpkins to spend right now. I can't use the four in tapestry. I cannot fit that shape in there. So I will use the four on a charter stone and write the two there. Gives me a heart. And then I'll use the two. 
it's not a great shape to have in tapestry, honestly, based on my current setup. But yeah, I'll use the two right there and right there. Not getting a lot out of this turn. So should I create a die this turn and use it over inside? There might be time to do that, yeah. Um, because you can only use one die per realm per turn. And so I'm gonna use a one coin to create a one value die, which actually gives me a coin right back. And I will also spend a heart down here to get another star. Nikki said that they enjoyed playing the game at Geekway. That's great to hear, Nikki. Yeah, we, we gave Geekway a bunch of copies now that give them a little sneak preview there. Uh, George is still waiting on his copy. I'm sorry you can't play along, George. All right, turn uh, seven. Let's get a six here. There's a six, a one and a six. That could be really good if I only had a pumpkin. Yes, yeah, it's, it's actually the opposite of what I need in Charterstone. Can't, I, the one could be helpful in Tapestry. So I might be able to pull that off. And I need a six over inside anyway. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I need a one at some point in Tapestry. And I need those pumpkins. So I'm going to fill this in with the one. And that completes a pumpkin. That leaves the six. So I could use the six over here in Charterstone and get a coin. I could also use the six over here in Scythe. Either way, it seems pretty good. Let's do this. I'm going to create a three value die. Actually, I have I have a, a, a seven, some of seven here. So I can use two coins to replicate one of those dice. That opens things up a little bit. Um, but I think I actually want a two. I do. So I'm going to create a two value die. I'm going to use it in Charterstone. So I can use either die and write it down over here in Charterstone. Obviously, I'm going to use the six. I get a pumpkin from that. And then I'll use... The actual six die that I have over here in Scythe, to cross that off, I gain another pumpkin, and I have a heart to spend, so I'll spend that heart to gain another star. I'm doing really well on Scythe. I'm really happy about how that's turned out. But I have some work to do in Tapestry. But maybe I, I, I should really be, be filling in something in Tapestry every turn. I only have two turns left. I think it will be impossible unless I use pumpkins to work around that. All right, turn eight. Almost done here. Another six and a one. Huh. All right. It might be time for me to cross off my sixes in Charterstone, but let's see about that. What can I do with that? Um, Kevin says, should I get the coin back from... Where did I cross off? Where, I, where would I get the coin back from? Because I crossed off the six over here. I crossed off that over here. I, I don't think so, but uh, uh, yeah, if I missed something, let me know. I, I, I might, I'm might i sure I could have missed something. Hopefully I don't confuse anyone. I have a one and a six. Hmm. Let's go ahead. Yeah, I think I have, well, it's a tough choice in Charterstone because I can use the six to gain a coin and put the one here, but really I should probably be getting the stars from those sixes at this point. So let's do that. So I will use the six to cross off three crates down here in Charterstone and gain three stars. Not bad, not ideal, but not bad. And then I'll use the one over here in Tapestry, which completes a row and a column and gives me a heart. That's pretty good. I should be happy with that. Um, and I can't currently, I guess I could spend hearts to replicate one of my dice, but I don't really want that. I need a three. I need, a, I need a three to use inside, and I don't have that. But I could just get go after the star, the, uh, the star inside. I could uh, use the two. So I'll probably end up doing that on my last turn. I, I'm okay inside to get all the stars. All right, last turn. Let's jump to the last turn. A four and a four. We have a pair, actually. Could, that could be really helpful with the hearts, because hearts, uh, you can spend two hearts to replicate one of the dice if you roll a pair. So we have a four and a four on the last turn. I feel like I had that in the, in the other round too. So this is actually like part two of a game that I started yesterday. You can check that out on Facebook or YouTube to see what round one looked like with some other realms. But we have a four and a four here. We have some pumpkins that we could manipulate, used to manipulate. This isn't great, I'll be honest, because I can't fill in the four shape in tapestry. So I need to manipulate that shape down to a three. 
which is pretty good. I'll manipulate that down to a three, which gives me a coin. So now I have two coins to spend. I wish I could get another pumpkin though. That's the problem. But I have two coins, so I could cross off this to get another star there. I could also use the two coins to make a die and, oh no, but I won't have a coin to do that there. Is there any way around this? And I have to use that other four if I can, but I don't know if I can use it. I, I, I just don't have the pumpkin to manipulate the die. So I think my best bet is to use uh, the two coins to cross off this crate and get that. And I have a die that I really can't use. You have to be able to try to use the die to the best of your ability. I cannot use that die. And so this is actually an interesting scenario. It's kind of a rare scenario in, in, um, in Rolling Realms, but I truly cannot use this die. And there is a little thing in the rules that says, if you can't use a die, if you truly cannot use it, you could instead gain a resource. So I'm gonna use that rule perhaps for the first time uh, to gain a pumpkin. And this could end up benefiting me because I can now, because I have that pumpkin, I can use, oh, I don't even know if it'll help. I'll just do it for fun. I can now cross off two hearts to copy one of the fours, manipulate that four down to a three. I can't use it in Charter Stone because I already used the die there. I can use it up here though to gain another pumpkin. It doesn't really do any good though because I don't have a coin to spend inside. But I did it just for fun, just for sake of example. I came so close to Tapestry, I was off by a little bit, but I only got four stars there. So my total, hold up the camera so you can see. So Tapestry, Tapestry has given me four stars. Charterstone, let me, let me move the camera here so you can see me. Charterstone, also giving me four stars. And Scythe, didn't quite finish it off, but got five stars there, not bad. So that is a total of 13 plus any remaining resources I have, 13.3. For any of you playing along, what did you get? Ben says he got 11.3. He says he always fills up Scythe too quickly. Um, yeah, this was, it. I don't know if the rolls came out all that well in this game for anyone to get a great score because we saw too many replicating. So in Charterstone, you don't really want the same pairs of dice to be rolled every turn. That complicates things. So we had, I had, I rolled two and a four three times and I rolled a six and a one three times. So that didn't equate to Charterstone, but that's part of the fun of rolling rounds. You're going to get different rolls. You have to use those rolls and the lack of information that you have to optimize, uh, optimize those rolls. Yeah, so thank you for playing along. I will be back in the near future, maybe tomorrow, who knows? It's only a few minutes for me to do one of these. So in the near future to do um, the kind of the third round of this game. And, uh, oh, Joshua got 13.4. Uh, that's awesome, Joshua. Yeah, that's better than my 13.3. Um, feel free to post your, your scores here or on the YouTube version of this video that'll pop up on YouTube in a minute. Thanks for playing along and have a great weekend if I don't see you again, but I'll probably see you sometime on Saturday or Sunday to play another game, another round. All right, take care.